So at PCTV, we like to talk about adding value. That's been one of the big topics we've talked about ever since we set up this program. And whether that's adding value in the products you produce or the services that you provide. Now maybe as farmers who've got exceptionally busy over the years and there's been a lack of staff and less of lack of money in the industry, it's become easy to sell large amounts of either your commodity or raw material as a wholesale product and let someone else do all the marketing and and all the processing to take it to the public and maybe along the way we've lost our way with our connection with the public and the farmer so recently we found out that the brown family have decided to take the matters into their own own hands and bring back the connection of the public with the local farmer and and start their own brand and produce their own milk so we thought this was an absolute fantastic opportunity it fitted really really well with what we we like to do at PCTV um, so Ross and James went along to catch up with the Brown family um, to see how they are supplying their own brand branded Bidley dairy milk in the local area we just want to say from the team thank you very much for the support and hope you're enjoying watching the videos as much as we enjoy making them if you've got any questions or any ideas for future videos, please feel free to get in touch. Like and share. Um, click the bell in the top right corner. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, Twitter, uh, and obviously YouTube as well. Um, we, it's getting really exciting time now at PC TV. Uh, you know, the sale now is fast approaching. We're doing deals with sponsors, and you're going to see a lot more from the team. And uh, building really really exciting towards the sale so hope you enjoy this video and uh, we'll look forward to the next one okay guys we're over in the dairy now at, uh, at Bidley um, you'll, have, you'll have heard a little bit about the story uh, we're very privileged to be here with Ray and, and Adam um, they're very kindly invited us to have a look around the dairy today and tell us a little bit more about what they do here and um, what they've done up to this point and what their plans are for the future so just before we get into the actual dairy, obviously we're in the processing unit just now. Um, Ray, could you just tell us a little bit about um, the history of the farm and, and the cows and what led you to where we are today? Well, we've been here now for since 1961. Uh, prior to that, we were in Biddleth in Staffordshire. Right. And um, that's where we started with the pedigrees. At that time, it was called the Biddleth herd. And my grandfather split the, the herd into two, because he had two sons. Um, my uncle had the Bidval herd and my, my dad had the Bidley herd. But the cows we've got now actually originate back to 1919 okay. when uh, my grandfather started. So, right, so 100 years this year? 100 years this year, yeah. A million cows, oh, fantastic. And those cow families obviously that you work with then are some of the families that you work with in the herd today that produce the milk for Bidley dairy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's a great story. And if Adam, we obviously we're standing in a pretty impressive modern dairy now. Obviously, this didn't happen overnight. What was it that led to from milking cows 100 years ago to, to this this point here? Yeah, well, I suppose uh, really it was a couple of things that determined why we did it. But a couple of years ago, our milk price went from 26, 27 pence a litre, which. Uh, was suddenly just dropped down to the 14 p in a litre yeah. uh, on the chart. Uh, so obviously that was a, a big impact on why we need to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Being in control of our own market and uh, you know from the, right from the start of the process to the end, right to the to the, yeah. uh, to the customer. Um, but as well as the, we, we have always wanted to do something like this as well and uh, yeah, we've just been fortunate enough to yeah. Yeah, have a go. So obviously the timing's right now, it hasn't maybe been before. Um, there's you you're involved in the business now, Adam and, and your wife and, yeah. and you have another a brother, um, Ryan and his wife, they're involved in the business as well. So a little bit of maybe succession and somewhere for for every all the, all those three families to, to be involved in the business and still be able to make a living, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a big part of it really. Um, uh, Adam and uh, was going to be involved in an anaerobic digestion project we were going to do. Unfortunately, uh, like a lot of these projects, even though it was a, probably the greenest project you could ever think of, uh, an action group managed to stop that. So, um, and Adam was interested in doing this diversification that actually brings value to the to the to the business and uh, very closely linked. And of course, his uh, 
so Adam and Becky, his wife, uh, are looking after this side of the business, and then uh, Brian and Becky will look after the farm. Okay. Yeah, but it's still run as a, a family, family-owned business. But then there's that nice story of we milk the cows on this side of the road, we milk yeah. them to this side of the road, and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it, like you say, you're in control of from the, the starting point with the cows right through to the end product yeah. on the customer shelf. Yeah, great. And um, in terms of sort of the actual dairy, um, you process milk here um, and bottle it. I think that's right, isn't it? And, at, at the moment, it's just it's just your own milk that comes from the cows across the road. Yeah. The day. I don't know which one you want to answer this, but is that how you're planning on keeping it for the time being, or the future, or what, what's your plans? I, I would personally say I'd, I'd always like to just have it just our milk, mm -hmm. um, not to bring in any other farmers' milk because we've got a good story, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're doing something very different to other dairies. Yeah. Um, to promote the, the milk as a bit of a premium. Yeah. And uh, I think there's um, certainly initially we're just uh, processing milk here, and uh, you know to get to, to be able to process all our own milk, um, whether that is going out in the form of uh, whole milk, semi-skimmed and skimmed and cream, um, we are actually going to. Uh, uh, develop a business into producing butter as well and we're also um, got somebody that's already making cheese and would like to come and be part of this business as well and we've, uh, we're, we're looking to, to work with Rees Heath, uh, Rees Heath College because uh, they have a, a fantastic dairy technology course there uh, that we would really like to, to be involved in. They, they've got some very enthusiastic entrepreneurial students that go there but as it stands at present, there's not a lot of future for them to be able to have their own businesses. Okay. And uh, it, this is an opportunity where they could come and actually, we've got the premises, we've got a supply of pasteurised milk, we've got the equipment that uh, um, is needed. We could do some joint ventures with students with bright ideas to bring new products to the market and add more value to the product to the milk and yeah. I think with Brexit this is something we've really got to look at is we're, currently we're bringing so many products in of higher value we need to start thinking how can we go about making those products ourselves we've got every opportunity to do that here yeah. and if it grows from this point then we've uh, we've got a site down the road where we can actually go to the second one on the ladder and have a more commercial scale to it. Oh. So, Ray, going back to what you were saying about sort of involving students with Reese Heath um, in the, their daily technology, sort of entrepreneurs, I guess it kind of fits with your story of um, you had to find an outlet for your milk um, outside of, sort of the, the big dairies, as it were. Um, and I guess that fits in with the story. You know, these guys, with, without somebody like yourselves, they've probably got a limited access to the market to, to develop what, what it is they're, they're trying to do with sort of innovation and stuff. And, I think that's a really yeah. great thing that you're doing to try and provide that outlet for them. It's a win-win situation really for us all. I mean, you know, we've made this investment now, um, really to add value to it, um, it is great. And to do that, really, we want to bring in people that are enthusiastic and uh, have got ambition. Yeah. So we're really looking for entrepreneurs that, uh, and, and trying to think about the, the pitfalls of, of to go into business yourself and, and so taking the capital outlay out as much as we possibly can for them. So we've got the premises, we've got the equipment, we've actually got some student accommodation as well. So that you know we can uh, it's, try and remove as many bars as possible from for somebody to come yeah. and have a go. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's with sort of people that are going to come in and work with you. But going back to your own business, sort of the Bidley dairy business, um, the milk comes from the cows that you milk. So how much milk do you actually bring into the dairy to process? So we send over um, 3,000 litres of milk just to come over here. Yeah. Um, we actually process over 1,000 litres of that. Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, we deliver a Monday.
Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Okay. What we haven't processed and what's left in the tank, mm -hmm. the milk tank kit has no right. So you do still sell a portion of your milk to a milk buyer? Yeah, yeah. Current, currently it's a bigger portion, but um, you know, until we've, uh, we've, we've only just started, yeah. so uh, you know, we want to make sure the product is right and uh, the feedback we've been having has been brilliant. So, yeah. so we're now ready really to sort of expand and, uh, and, and you know, there's, a, there's quite a lot of customers we haven't actually been to see yet that are uh, wanting to sell the milk. So, uh, so ultimately we'd like all the milk to come over here and yeah. all be processed through the dairy. And, uh, and have you got the capacity in the dairy as it is just now to do that? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's obviously the goal. So, mm. yeah, and you were, what, two months in now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just over two months now. So you know, already you're on to the right foot. Yeah. And, and that's it. And none of that has been done really from us going out there trying to sell it. Right. It's all been really done from the start with social media. Okay. So we basically had a Facebook page with yeah. the dairy, put a few pictures on me. Yeah. Everyone aware of what we were doing right from the start. Okay. So, like, a year ago, really. So yeah. um, keeping a post of where we're up to with the building. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Now we're actually following the story. That's it. Yeah. And then they've all come to us. Okay. And I, I know it's not going to be like that forever. Yeah. We'll have to get out there. And yeah. Be, yeah. Well, in, actual, in actual fact, we are. We've, uh, uh, just good to start selling milk from the farm as well. So, uh, okay. so that is actually coming to us. Yeah. <laughs> Similar product, you know, we've highlighted slight differences that you can buy. 
is it? We have had some good uh, reviews on the taste of it, but other than the taste of it, a lot of people have said how nice they like the label, you know, the yeah. label's looking, how it stands out from other milk bottles. Yeah. Um, and I think that is, you know, it's obviously very important. So if we put yeah. a slightly bigger label than most of the uh, dairy views, we've got a little bit of a story on the side, okay. which is a bit of a personal touch. So yeah. you've got it on your, your breakfast table, yeah. you can read it. Yeah. Just tells you a little bit of uh, a little bit about us and where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, it, we, we do a 500 ml okay. uh, plastic bottle. We do a one litre and a two litre. Right. We're so yet to decide whether we're going to start doing glass as well. Okay. Uh, right. so, so it's recycled. Yeah. Part of yeah. As well. but yeah this, this, this proves and comes to be. I'm sure. Yeah, really. So I think we can probably have glass in with it as well. But yeah. yeah. So pleasing everyone then. But luckily, we've actually got our product to sell, so it actually benefits us to advertise and promote our milk. Yeah. The problem is, as a nation of generic advertising, is that you're putting money in to, to advertise milk, mm-hmm. and it's very difficult. Yeah. It frustrates me that we're not actually promoting the benefits of milk, the health benefits. Oh, sure. How many people out there know that milk is a superfood? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's got all of these. It's, Fantastic, and in, in the light of, of all the bad publicity that soft drinks and, uh, and have had with high sugar contents and, and all these things, it's, we're not really filling that void with a product we know is really good for them. And, and the, the information that's out there about how good milk is, it's just not being used, and that's a real frustration. And I think going forward, we need to address that, and that's something that we can hone in on. And the benefit, the additional benefits we've had with, uh, with our milk, the way we're feeding the cows and everything, yeah. should benefit us. Yeah. But as an industry, we could do a lot better. I think, I think you're right, yeah. And I think probably you've hit the nail on the head there that it's because we're trying to sort of market a generic product, whereas the, you know, the real benefit that you guys have got with this product is your product. Mm-hmm. You know, you're invested in it, um, you've got a lot to gain out of the advertising of it. Um, maybe it's a little more tangible to you, that, yeah. that, that money and that effort yeah. and that investment you put into marketing, obviously you can see a return on it. Um, as you can see, you know, like I said, the shape of the bottle is probably not much different, but it does look pretty different from some of the other milk that you can buy on the shelf. Yeah. Um, and going forward, you know, I think the opportunity we've got is we go into new products and, and uh, you know, if you're looking for, to the future of uh, the dairy industry, I think if we really grasp the opportunities that are there, the future is really good for, for British agriculture yeah. and British dairy farm especially. Because uh, whatever happens to Brexit, we have great opportunities and we've got fantastic opportunities with new products and that's why we want to actually grasp that. Yeah. And bring those products to market yeah. to be there first. Yeah, I said that you need to kind of get ahead of the curve on yeah. Just you know, talking about that in the future. Obviously, at the minute you market your milk uh, into sort of farm shops, uh, stores, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, that's you, you deliver the milk from here to the stores. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, we have our own sort of delivery. Yeah, um, provide our own delivery service. Um, yeah, we, we'll probably just sort of enhance on that really, we'll just sort of go around a few other, sort of a little bit further afield. Yeah. Um, not so much supermarket, but maybe like the, the nice sort of restaurants yeah. and uh, hotels and schools as well. Okay, so that's going to be another avenue, it's slightly different route to market, but very valuable one to I'm sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The other thing we should, we'd like to, to do is, um, a book called the Cheshire Larder, and, uh, and, and that's actually bringing local products, uh, not just milk, but our, obviously our milk will be a big part of that, yeah. but to, to create a business where uh, we can provide uh, various sort of things, eggs, um, bread, cheeses, not just dairy products, but, uh, yeah. but a range of products. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, and that's something which we, uh, we're hoping to create a hub here for and uh, deliver locally, but right. just locally. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, you've already touched on this, um, and I think by you know, actions 
speak louder than words sometimes. But the fact that you guys have put so much investment into this, you obviously think there's a, there's a future in dairy farming. Um, how, how do you see the future of dairy farming? Do you think it's all going to be this kind of avenue to market, or do you, do you see any other difference in the future of, of the dairy market? I think the future is bright for dairy farming. There's no point in doing it if you're not really enthusiastic about it. You've got to love it to do it because the returns I don't think will ever be brilliant. Um, it's a very competitive thing to be in. Um, but I think there are opportunities there, and I think those opportunities need to be to be grasped. Yeah. And I think you, know, you guys have obviously done it, and I think absolute kudos to you. you know, you've, as it were, taken control of your own future. And I think that's probably going to be more the way that things are going to go. We, 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 we're going to have to come away from this idea that people are going to do it for us. Yeah. And I think you, know, you guys have hit that on the head that nobody's going to market your money for you. You're going to have to do it yourself. And actually, when you're invested in it, it makes sense to do it, isn't it? Yeah. You know? um, so, no, thank you very much for showing us around. It's been absolutely great. Thank you very much for your time. Um, we all wish you the very best for the future of the business and we watch you closely. Um, thank you for you know, taking time out of your busy schedule to, to talk to us. And obviously, you guys have got social media outlets, so if you look up Bendy DA on Facebook, um, you'll be able to follow these guys and get updates and, you know, see how they're getting on with their business. Don't, remember, don't forget to uh, follow us on social, um, Perfection Collection TV on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and obviously subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, and keep watching the videos. If you click the, the bell in the corner of the screen, you'll receive updates, so whenever there's a new video, you'll be kept up to date with what we're doing and where we're going. So thank you very much, Ray. Uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you.